Good morning, brethren, sisters. How are you today? I hope you are doing well. Uh, we have prayed for so many of you today, and we are praying for you daily. Many of you are brothers and sisters of the Church of the Living God. Please go ahead and get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Today, once again, brethren, if you have one of these ribbon markers in your scriptures, you might want to use it. Today, we are going to be having a somewhat of an expository video looking at Luke chapter 5, specifically verses 33 on to verse 39. A brother of mine gave me the premise for this, and um, no verses, but just kind of mentioned it to him, and he passed it along on to me, and here we go. So once again, this is a collaborated effort, um, not just not just something that the Lord showed me, okay? But um, <clears throat> anyway... Please follow me along in your scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. At the moment of recording this, I have no idea what I'm going to call this video. We'll, we'll, um, we'll figure that out as we go. But Luke chapter 5, verses 33 on to verse 39, okay? Like I said, if you have a ribbon marker, today's the day to use it because... For a total of, uh, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven verses. We got quite a few scriptures to go through. All right. Before we start reading in verses 33 on to verse 39, let's first read verses 31 and 32. And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to belief. <coughs> I just mean, beg your pardon. Mm. Uh, excuse me. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often, and make many prayers, and likewise the disciples of the Pharisees, but thine eat and drink? And he said unto them, can ye make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. Now, I, I really want to very quickly address this. Um, our beloved brother Brian Denlinger believes and teaches, and I'm, I'm not saying he's wrong or anything like that, so y'all chill. Uh, this is just one of the things that I do disagree with, uh, with Brother Brian. He counts the fourth dispensation being the three year, three and a half year ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He counts that as a one of the dispensations. Um, I disagree with that. Uh, I believe and teach that there are seven dispensations, just like Brother Brian, and so do many of those who are truly saved and born again of the Church of the Living God. But um, I, I do happen to disagree with Brother Brian on that, thinking that the three three year ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was a dispensation in and of itself. But I, I, I want to go through this really quickly. I, re, I really do. Go to Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Now, the reasoning, uh, the reason why I believe uh, Brother Brian believes that the 
three-year ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is a dispensation, is because the law and the prophets prophesied until John. Okay, it says in one portion of the scriptures that the law and the prophets were until John, but elsewhere it also says the law and the prophets prophesied till John. Okay, that's not a contradiction, it's saying the same thing. Okay, but the thing of it is, is that the law was still binding, but the king was on the earth. See, Luke chapter 22, verses 31 on to verse 38. Luke chapter 22, verses 31 on to verse 38. And the Lord said, Shimon, Shimon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. And he said unto them, now pay attention, when I sent you without purse and script and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. Keep in mind the miracle of the loaves of the 5,000 that were fed, okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, raising people from the dead, healing the sick, putting his hands on people's eyes so when they opened them, they saw them as uh, trees walking and stuff like that, okay? As king on earth, offering the millennial kingdom onto the Jewish people, as king, he would provide and take care of his people. Okay? That's the whole thing of it. That's why the Sermon on the Mount, the uh, doctrine of the Millennial Kingdom is given. Okay? Because the king will be reigning from Jerusalem on his throne as son of, da as son of David, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. He will be ruling and reigning in Jerusalem. Okay? And as king, he can provide for the needs of those his people. Okay, that's why he says, When I sent you without purse and script and shoes, lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. <clears throat> then said he unto them, But now, he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his script. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you, that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. And they said, Lord, be behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. The reason why the Lord Jesus Christ said that is because he was going to the cross to pay for our sins, okay? John 17, John 17, verses 7 on to verse 13. John 17, verses 7 on to verse 13. John 17, verses 7 on to verse 13. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou sh but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. 
he was going to the Father. It says right there, I come to thee, Holy Father. Okay? Jesus Christ is God the Father. Okay? But he was going to the Father. Okay? Hence, the king was leaving the earth. That's why he says, I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Now go to Zechariah. <clears throat> Zechariah chapter 13. Zechariah chapter 13. Come on, fingers, work with me. Beg your pardon, brethren. Zechariah chapter 13, verses 7 on to verse 9. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire, referencing um, the time of Jeff, uh, Jacob's trouble, and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. Also, you can very, um, you can make a very valid argument about the Holocaust of the Jew in this, as a reference to the Holocaust. You can definitely make that comparison with this verse as well. Let's continue. They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my God. He was going to be cut off. He was going to the cross to pay for our sins. Okay? And as king on the earth, as king, he could provide for his own. And those who followed him as king were under what could, what could have been right then and present if the Jewish people had uh, received him as their king. They were under the millennial rule. But Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53, Isaiah 53. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. <clears throat> but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we... Like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his, his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. <clears throat> and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Aha! An offering for sin. He shall see his seed. 
He shall, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, the son of David, King, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. For he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Why did we look at this? While the king was on the earth, he was offering the millennial kingdom onto the Jewish people. And those who were under him as king, who believed on him and received him as their king, the son of David, okay, they were under that rule. Okay? They were. Because the king fed 5,000 people. He raised the dead. He healed the sick. He gave sight to the blind. While he was with them, they lacked nothing. But now he was going up. <laughs> he was going to the cross to make payment for the sins, to die on the cross. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, of course. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verses 1 through 4. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Okay? So, as king, like I said, he was offering the kingdom unto the Jewish people, and those who received him as their king were under him. And he was their king, obviously. but. Israel rejected him as their king, which it was prophesied that it was going to be as such. He went to the cross to pay for our sins. He died, buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Hence, the time of the Gentiles, this dispensation came in after the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, it was the death of the testator that brought in the New Testament. Okay? But the law was still binding even when the king was on the earth, because the king had yet to make the payment for our sins. That is, why, that is where I disagree with our beloved brother Brian Denlinger about what is the fourth dispensation. Okay, I'm, I'm not saying anything nay or against him, not whatsoever. Um, I'm just saying I, I don't agree with that. It was still under the law, even though the king was on the earth. I wanted to bring that up. I wanted to bring that up. Not as any means to attack or anything. No, no, no. But uh, just, to, just to bring that up to you. Okay? But now, let's read verse 36 in Luke chapter 5. And he spake also a parable unto them. No man putteth a piece of a new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new maketh a rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. Leviticus. Go to Leviticus, chapter 19, all the way in the Torah. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Okay? Leviticus chapter 19, verse 19. Just one verse. Leviticus 19, verse 19. Ye shall keep my statutes. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. Thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed. 
Neither shall a garment mingled of linen and woolen come upon thee. Hmm. Now go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 22. Deuteronomy chapter 22. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 11. Thou shalt not wear a garment of diverse sorts as of woolen and linen together. What's the significance of that? What is the significance of that? Well, think about it. Distinction and separation. Okay? Linen clothing, all right, is breathable. It's a little bit more uh, silky on you, a little bit more comfortable. Wool is very, very warm and thick. Very warm, very thick, causeth sweat. And if any of you have worn anything like woolen socks or a woolen jacket, once that gets wet, that's uh, apparently that's one of the reasons why the Norsemen used to make their sails out of wool, apparently, because once they got wet, they could hold the wind a lot better. OK, but. But. Separation and differences between the two. Just like someone who truly has God living within them and one who does not, even though they claim that they do. The distinction, see? Distinction. Separation. Distinguishing between the two. God is a God of distinction, brethren. Going to have to get over that, okay? Now, also, too, go to Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 3. Zechariah chapter 3. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 5. Zechariah chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5. And he shewed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? And, for, and when the Lord saves you by grace through faith, okay, you come to him through repentance, brokenness over yourself, turning from yourself, sorrow that you're a scumbag and that you deserve to go to hell, sorrow and turning, okay? <clears throat> Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire when the Lord saves you? Amen. Let's continue. Now, Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. And I said, Let them set a fair mitre upon his head. So they set a fair mitre upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord stood by. When you get saved and born again, something's going to change around here. It's inevitable. It, it's going to happen. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, lives within you. So don't do that. Don't look at that. Don't touch that. Don't eat that. What are you doing? Don't do that. Oh, you, you're gonna just you're not gonna obey me, huh? Huh? You're not gonna do what I tell you to do? Okay, fine. Go ahead and eat it. Oh, your stomach is upset. Oh, maybe you should have listened to me. You get it. You get it. The Lord is going to tell you and guide you into what he wants you to do. He will guide you into all truth, see. He doesn't force you. Neither does the devil. You got to remember that. But it's for our betterment. And changes are going to come regardless. 
It's it, it just happens. It just happens. And those who uh, protest that are not saved themselves. Evidence of a changed life after salvation is a good way to judge, according to the scriptures, whether or not there is truly salvation in that individual whatsoever. Know what I'm saying? Okay? Now, let's go to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Romans 13. Come on, fingers, work with me. Romans 13, if my fingers will get there. Verses 9. Verses 9 on to verse 14. Romans 13, verses 9 on to verse 14. For this are commandments for today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness. <laughs> Any of you who uh, might see this, who read an NIV, NLT, ESV, NASB, whatever. Um, in your Bible, in Romans 13, verse 9, does your say, thou shalt not bear false witness? You, you, you go ahead and check that out for yourself. Let's continue. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we when we believe. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Okay? Refreshing our memories in Luke chapter 5, verse 39. No man putteth on a piece of a new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new maketh a rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. Romans 13, verse 14, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Galatians. Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verses 27 on to verse 29. Galatians chapter 3, verses 27 on to verse 29. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Now, this is talking about eternally. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed. Oh, beg your pardon, excuse me. And heirs according to the promise. This is referring to eternally, to our eternal standing with our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father in heaven. Okay? Culturally, culturally, ethnically, there are differences. God is a God of distinction, brethren. 
You have to realize that and you have to come to grips with that. Okay? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, likes variety. Okay? Eternally, salvifically, as I used to say. Eternally. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Are there not Jews and Greeks today? A Greek is a, is a Gentile and non-Jew, okay? Um, are there bond and free today? Hmm? Uh, despite these grotesque, transgendery whatevers, uh, there are male and female, okay? For ye are all one in Christ Jesus, eternally. Culturally, ethnically, there's a difference. Yes, distinction. Yes, God is God of distinction. Okay, this is talking about eternally. All right? Let's continue. Go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. And while we're here, let's refresh our memory in Luke chapter 5, verse 36. And he spake unto and he spake also a parable unto them. No man putteth a piece of a new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new maketh a rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 11. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking about something else. Yea. All of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. The lion of the tribe of Judah, and it says here, as a roaring lion, referring to the devil. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, he's going to be as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Son of David, King of the Jews, King over everything, reigning from Jerusalem, see. Right here, your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion. Counterfeit. Walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. And amen. 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 Those of us of the Church of the Living God are suffering, whether it's physical ailments, spiritual attacks, attacks by twits here on uh, YouTube and other platforms, okay? Whether it's outside your door, tracting, and people yelling at you, <laughs> okay? Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Those of us of the Church of the Living God, the body of Christ, are sharing 
in these afflictions right now. As uh, my beloved brother Matthew Mellinson once said, uh, are you suffering with your brethren? Are you weeping for your brethren? Do you pray for your brethren? I sure hope so you do. But the, but the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And Jude. Go to Jude, verses 20 on to verse 25. Jude 20 on to verse 25. There is no chapter 1 in the book of Jude. <laughs> Jude 20 on to verse 25. But beloved, but ye, excuse me, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most, most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and ever. Amen. Luke chapter 5, verse 36. And he spake also a parable unto them. No man putteth a piece of a new garment upon an old. What is that new garment? What is the old? I think you can figure that one out. If otherwise, then, the bo then both the new maketh a rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. It's a constant struggle, isn't there? Isn't there? Isn't there? Yes. And no man putteth a putteth a piece of a new garment upon an old, being born again. Verse thirty-seven. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. Now, now very quickly, <clears throat> there is a charismatic interpretation of this where they like to uh, attribute the new wine as to the Holy Ghost, and they will go to here and branch off trying to validate their uh, talking in tongues is legitimate for today and all the sign gifts are legitimate for today and yada 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 those were for the jews they're not here for us today but you need to be aware about that some uh charismatic a lot of charismatics will come to this and uh, make this about how the Holy Ghost will guide you to do talking like a nincompoop and this blah, 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 and laying on uh, the hands and um, nonsense. But, and no man putteth new wine into old bottles. Now, obviously, for our, for our instruction in righteousness, what is he talking about here? What could he be talking about for our instruction in righteousness, okay? Let's continue. Else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottle shall perish. Go to Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Song of Song, which is Solomon's. You read that book? Huh? It's the sixth today, you know. It's only eight uh, eight chapters, one a day. You can read this yourself, by yourself in one day, you know what I'm saying? 
Song of Songs, which is Solomon's, chapter 8. Oh, that thou wert as my brother, that sucked the breast of my mother. When I should find thee without, I would kiss thee, yea, I should not be despised. I would lead thee and bring thee into my mother's house, who would instruct me. I would cause thee to drink of spiced wine, of the juice of my pomegranate. His left hand should be under my head, and his right hand should embrace me. Should embrace me. I charge, I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that ye stir not up, nor awake my love, until he please. You got a Bible that is not the scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures? Tell me, does your he right there say she in your Bible that is not the authorized version of the scriptures? Mm. Let's continue. Who is this that cometh up from the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved? I raised thee up under the apple tree. There thy mother brought thee forth. There she brought thee forth that bare thee. Set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm. For love is strong as death, jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would utterly be condemned. Com, uh, contempt. Excuse me. Uh. Verse 8. We have a little sister, and she hath no breasts. What shall we do for our sister in the day when she shall be spoken for? When she... Sh when she shall be spoken for. Catching all the tie-ins here thus far with, uh, with uh, for example, being sealed. We have a little sister. <clears throat> uh, I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that ye stir not up nor awake my love until he please. Hmm? Let's continue. We have a little sister, and she hath no breasts. What shall we do for our sister in the day when she shall be spoken for? If she be a wall, we will build upon her a palace of silver. And if she be a door, we will enclose her with boards of cedar. I am a wall, and my breasts like towers. Then was I in his eyes as one that found favor. Solomon had a vineyard at Balhalmon. He let out the vineyard unto keepers. Every one for the fruit thereof was to bring a thousand pieces of silver. My vineyard, which is mine, is before me. Thou, O Solomon, must have a thousand, and those that keep the fruit thereof two hundred. Thou that dwellest in the gardens, the companions hearken to thy voice. Cause me to hear it. Make haste, my beloved, and be thou like to a row or to a young heart upon the mountains of spices. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Look at this about the wine here. I would cause thee, in verse 2, I would cause thee to drink of spiced wine of the juice of my pomegranate. In this context here, go to Joel. Go to Joel chapter 3. Joel. Daniel, Hosea, Joel. Joel chapter 3, verses 19 on to verse 21. Joel 3, 19 on to verse 21. Egypt, ah, uh, you know what? Let's make that 18. Verses 18 on to verse 21. Beg your pardon. 18 on verse 21. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountain shall drop down new wine, and the hills shall flow with milk, and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters, and a fountain 
shall come forth of the house of the Lord, and shall water the valley of Shittim. Egypt shall be a desolation, and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness, for the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall dwell forever, and Jerusalem from generation to generation. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for the Lord dwelleth in Zion. Future fulfillment coming in the future of, of the restoration of the children of Israel, the Jews. Yes, absolutely. But, but, flowing with new wine. Notice that. And 21, for I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for the Lord dwelleth in Zion. And Amos chapter 9. Amos chapter 9. One of the clearest, clearest portions of scripture that talk of a future restoration of the children of Israel after the time of Jacob's trouble. The one of the clearest in the Old Testament. Amos chapter 9, verses 11 on to verse 15. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen. What day is that? The second coming. Okay? And close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and will build it as in the days of old. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen which are called by my name. Saith the Lord that doeth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper. And the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed. And the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel. <coughs> and they shall build the waste cities, and inhabit them. And they shall plant, and they shall plant vineyards, and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens, and eat the fruit of them. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of the land out of their land which I have given them, saith the Lord the saith the Lord thy God. Future uh, fulfillment for the children of Israel. When our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, come down with us, the church of the living God, his bride, come down. Okay, to rule and reign from Jerusalem. Okay? Now go to Ephesians. But before we go that do that, verse 37 in Luke chapter 5. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1, on to verse 20. Beg your pardon, brother. Don't have room on my table. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness, or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. You're saved, born again, of the church of the living God. Today, you are a saint. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, 
For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Again, children of disobedience are not those of the church of the living God. No, children of disobedience are those who reject the gospel. Lost. You hear the gospel, the true gospel. Repentance toward God, faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, that Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You believe on him and call upon the name of the Lord. Okay? Call upon him, the ultimate shoe of humility. Okay? You reject that. Skip over repentance. Never mind the changed life. You're a child, you're a child of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. See verses seven and eight explain verse 6 what the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience is talking about be ye not therefore partakers with them or the them those of the world who reject the gospel for ye were sometimes darkness but now are ye light in the Lord saved walk as children of light for the fruit of the capital S spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth proving what is acceptable unto the Lord? And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light for whatsoever doth make manifest is light wherefore he saith awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead and christ shall give thee light see then that ye walk circumspectly not as fools the fool has said in his heart there is no god but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And let's read verse 21. Submitting yourselves one another in the fear of God. Distinction. Wouldn't you say so? And now... Go to Revelation chapter three. Uh, Revelation chapter thirteen. Revelation chapter thirteen. Revelation chapter thirteen. Verses sixteen on to verse eighteen. And he causeth all, both small and great. Take your pardon rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. One and the same thing. <clears throat> Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. Six, 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 www which is coming after the church of the living god is resurrected redeemed caught up 
okay? The mark of the beast is coming. The technology is already for it, around, right now, yes. But it is coming after we are uh, resurrected, redeemed, okay? Now, Revelation 14, 6 through 12. Wait for it. Go with me on this. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven. Uh, Revelation 14, 6 through 12. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Remember how it was spiced wine in Song of Songs, in Song of Solomon's, excuse me, and the wine of the wrath of her fornication. You know, how they have in their cup the wine that they uh, magically, abracadabra, turn into the blood of Jesus Christ and the little cookie. Uh, the abracadabra, hocus pocus, becomes the body. <laughs> yeah, transubstantiation. <laughs> yeah, let's continue. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever, whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Faith and works. It says here, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. Everlasting gospel. Faith alone, right, you twits? Just believe? No. No. Because you're going to go to hell when you take the mark of the beast. And right here, verse 12, that keepeth the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. It's going to be faith and works during the time of Jacob's trouble. And see, all of you people who want to follow these easy believism heretics, this is why they're uh, pushing so hard at these last hours, because we, the Church of the Living God, are going to be called up. And they are preparing those of you who do not want to repent of yourself, have sorrow over your sins, and come to the Lord as a broken, contrite sinner. You just want to overstep that and go straight to believe. They're preparing you to take the mark of the beast because remember, these people also claim to be dispensational, but it's faith alone from Genesis onto Revelation. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this is why they're doing it, brethren. And those of you lost people, this is what their goal is. After we, the Church of the Living God, are resurrected, they're conditioning those of you who call yourselves Christians. They're conditioning you to take the mark of the beast during the time of Jacob's trouble. It's just believe. It's just believe. Oh, the works, the commandments of God are objects of faith. <laughs> 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 
and he, everybody's favorite YouTube Jesuit, actually said that. <laughs> wow. And people bought it hook, line, and sinker. Remember the counterfeit, which Satan does, counterfeiting anything any, and everything that our Lord does? Revelation 17, verses 1 on to verse 6. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. The wine of her fornication. Spiced wine in the uh, Song of Solomon. The difference. Get it? Let's continue. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of the abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. This is describing Roman Catholicism, the Roman Catholic Church. The procession of the cardinals and bishops, purple and scarlet, gold decked with gold and whatnot. Okay. The ruse of the two keys of yellow and gold of the papal flag. No, no, no. Their true colors are purple and scarlet. It's talking about Roman Catholicism. Okay? The Roman Catholic Church. And also, look at verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Uh, there are some out there who like to tell you that America is Babylon. Um, do you, do you, uh, do you seriously see people's, oh, can't see. Do you seriously see people, um, people's multitudes and nations and tongues coming to meet Joe Biden? And eventually, President Kamala Harris? Do you, do you, no, this is talking about Roman Catholicism. Now go, go backward to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Refreshing our memories. Luke chapter 5, verse 37. <clears throat> and no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottle shall perish. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 on to verse 32. Beg your pardon, brethren. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 on to verse 32. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off 
concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. A dead giveaway. A dead giveaway of an infiltrator. A false, lost heretic. <clears throat> Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. <clears throat> bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking. Now, yes, someone of the Church of the Living God can commit all of those. Yes. But see, for who the Lord loveth, he rebukes and chasteneth. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Okay? You, as the church of the living God, you do any of those things, the Lord is going to chasten you. And if you have not chastisement, then Scripture calls you a bastard. And a bastard is someone who does not know who his father is. Okay? Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 22. Or uh, 21, excuse me. 17 on to verse 21. New wine must be put into new bottles. Being reborn, born again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ. God was in Christ, the soul of the Godhead. Jesus Christ was the Word made flesh. The flesh, you know, the skin suit. Not our Lord Jesus Christ, the actual physical flesh itself. Skin suit, you twits, okay? Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, the body. God the Father, the soul. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> to wit, God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. <laughs> For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. Something that not one of these wicked lost devils know anything about. They know nothing about it. Only up here, not down here. Okay? Romans chapter 12. 
Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, I beseech you, verses 1 and 2, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. <clears throat> and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, verses 11 on to verse 18. Luke chapter 8, verses 11 on to verse 18. Thank you, pardon. My cat needs to get out. Now, this is the parable of the sower, okay? Remember, which one are you within the parable of the sower? Luke 8, verses 11 on to verse 18. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear, that then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they, which when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation, fall away. <clears throat> and that which fell among thorns are they, which when they have heard, go forth, and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. But they that are on good ground, on the good ground, are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, covereth it with a vessel, or putteth it under a bed, but setteth it on a candlestick, that they which enter in might see the light. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Take heed, therefore, how ye hear, for whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken, even that which he seemeth to have. You have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwelling within you, and the Lord is that spirit, you know, the Holy Ghost. You have the scriptures, the spirit of truth. He shall guide you into all truth, and he will, will reveal things to you through the scriptures. But those who say that they are Christians and can do nothing but attack cannot refute scriptures with scriptures. They cannot refute when you speak from the scriptures, but nitpick little things to attack your person, spirit, soul, and body. Yeah, that's all they got. That's all they can do. And whosoever hath not from him shall be taken even that which he seemeth to have. <laughs> Good luck, you crazy whack jobs. Good luck to you. 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. Verses 1 on to verse 13. Okay? This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. 
uh, sorry, you women out there who think you are called to preach. No. <clears throat> For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation of the devil. Pride is that condemnation. And you know what, brethren? I hate to say this to you, but someone who is very proud of themselves, unfortunately, they are quite easy to rouse up. They, they really are. Pride is a great weakness for in a lot of these enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pride is their biggest weakness. Remember that, brethren. Remember that. Their pride. Their pride is their greatest weakness. And you just out of heaven chance can scratch their pride and set them off. <laughs> Can't you? <laughs> Let's continue. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Likewise, must the deacons be graved, grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure cons conscience. Right here, verse 10. And let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husband of one wife, ruling their children and their own house as well. For they that have used the office of a deacon will purchase to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 10. And let these also first be proved. Now this is talking about bishops and deacons, yes, but in a general sense, proving these people. And it's not like, here, here's a list. If you can, if you agree to all this, yes, 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 then you're in. No, 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 no. First Timothy chapter five. First Timothy chapter five, verses 21 on to verse 25. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 21 on to verse 25. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. Lay hands suddenly on no man. Don't be quick to associate yourself with someone. By laying hands on them. The laying on of hands was an imparting. And you see it done in a lot, a lot in the book of Acts. But when you lay hands on someone, you are imparting something. Uh, you are, you know, having fellowship. If I come up to you and put my hand on your shoulder, okay? You and me are connected as brethren, okay? As brethren. We're sharing with one another, okay? Lay hands suddenly on no man. And unfortunately, I have made this mistake of calling people brother who should have, who are no wise my brother. Okay, let's continue. Neither be partaker of other men's sins. Keep thyself pure. Don't be partner with a thief. Don't be partner with someone who is walking in sin, who refuses to repent, who justifies their sin. Stay away from those types of people. Keep thyself pure. 
Because remember, lay hands suddenly on no man. You're laying hands on someone and they be in sin. Guess what? That's going to rub off on you. And you're going to be defiled. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. It is, you could make a valid, valid argument because um, in verse in chapter 4, verse 12, it says, Let no man despise thy youth. Okay? You can make the argument that Tim had worry issues. You could say that. You can make a valid argument by uh, going through the books of First and Second Timothy, where it's constant encouragement that Tim might have been a, a kind of a frail, timid individual. And Paul uh, admonishes him to use a little wine for his stomach sake and thine often infirmities. Okay. Also, wine is good for digestion, that kind of thing like that. Okay. You can use a little wine. You can. Don't be drunk, which is excess. Okay. There is nothing wrong, wrong with using a little wine. Okay? There is nothing wrong with it. It's when you start getting schnuckered, then you're in sin. Okay? But, right here, verse 24 and 25. Some men's sins are open beforehand. There are some out there who call themselves Christians who are painfully obvious that they are no way part of the church of the living God. You know, an example, Todd White, Kenneth Doplin, T.J. Fakes, Phil Robinson, Joel Osteen, okay? Guys like that. They call themselves Christians, but you just slightly uh, judge them according to the scriptures. You're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're saved, huh? Yeah, you're a church of the living God, huh? Yeah, right, right, right. Some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment. And some men, they follow after. Some men they follow after. Now, going before the judgment, of course, referring to secrecy, that these evil men um, keep these things secret. But going before the judgment, we are to judge according to the scriptures. Okay? You are to judge me according to the scriptures. I am to judge you according to the scriptures. And uh, those who are of the church of the living God. Okay? We are to judge one another according to the scriptures, not our feelings, okay? But some of these people who infiltrate, and some men they follow after, it takes time. It takes time. Like I said, some are like painfully obvious, and some, it takes, you know, it takes time. It takes time. Verse 25, likewise also the good works of some are manifest beforehand, and they that are otherwise cannot be hid. And they that are otherwise cannot be hid. There are those out there who can do the good works. Oh, absolutely. And they that are otherwise cannot be hid. What is the motivation of these good works? Hmm? Is it a love for our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father? Fear of him, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men? Or is it just to make yourself look good? See what I'm saying? <clears throat> First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. 
1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 on to verse 23. We beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. What is it, 125? You're not going to make it this far. If you do, it's um, going to have to do better than that to send your little um, boy toy to do your dirty work. Just have to say this to you. You're going to have to do something a little bit different than sending your little boy toy from Canada. Okay? Hmm. Sorry. Sorry. Let's get back to more important matters. But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesyings. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Prove all things. According to the scriptures. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body. That's a person. Be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And most importantly. Two, brethren. Okay, very quickly. Now let's go back to Luke chapter 5, verse 37. No man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. Okay? First John chapter 2. Verse 19, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. We see you. Like that uh, wonderful video that uh, Brother Divisive and uh, Inerentist did. Wonderful video. Verse 38 in Luke chapter 5. <clears throat> but new wine must be put into new bottles. And both are preserved. New wine must be put into new bottles. And both are preserved. John 10. John 10. Verses 1 on to verse 16. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. Every single easy believism heretic out there is this. Okay? They go up some other way. They don't want to go through the door. Okay? But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is the door. Okay? Let's continue. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. There are people out there, many have touched on this, when you listen to them, it's like, 
you're saying something, you're saying right things, but there's something, there's something not, not right there. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. <clears throat> then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. In and then out, being taken out of here. Okay? And find pasture. Reference unto the millennial kingdom. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Thieves. These easy believism heretics. The whole lot of you. Thieves. The thief cometh not, but to steal. Steal the word that was sown in someone's heart. And to kill, death by various means, assassination of character, slander, attacks, and if they were in person, actual murder. And to destroy, try to bring down people. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep, but he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own sheep are not, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. And know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so I know, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. There's reference right there. Verse 16, onto this dispensation, the timely Gentile. Okay? And skipping over to verses 24 on to verse 33. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep as I said unto you. These easy believism heretics, they are not of his sheep. Their father is the devil. They dispute to change life. That comes automatically, because the Lord lives in you. Things are going to change. There is going to come a change in your life. God lives within you. How can there not be a change, people? How can there not be a changed life after salvation? But see, if there is no change, Lord's either going to kill you, okay? Give this one over to the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5. Or, guess what? They ain't saved and of the church of the living God. Let's continue. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them, unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Neither shall anyone pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, the soul of the Godhead. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. 
Here it is. I and my Father are one. One God, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? One God, spirit, soul, and body. The Holy Ghost is the spirit. God the Father is the soul. Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. The Word made flesh. The flesh, you know, the skin suit, okay? The flesh, all right? Yeah? Spirit, soul, and body. God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. One God, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shewed unto you from my Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou being a man makest thyself God. Second Corinthians now. Second Corinthians chapter five again. Second Corinthians. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. Second Corinthians chapter five once again. Come on, fingers, work with me. Second Corinthians 5, verses 1 on to verse 8. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God in a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven, our uncorruptible body. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the capitalist spirit. Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent. From the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and be present with the Lord. Preserved. Go back to Luke chapter 5, verse 38. But new wine must be put into new bottles. And both are preserved. 1 Corinthians 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 10 on to verse 16. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? Note the lowercase s of the spirit of man. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the capital S, Spirit of God. Now we have received, not the lowercase s, Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, lowercase s again, given unto us, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And here is the crux, the coup de gras, uh, if you will, of all these people who are lost. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the capital S, Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. 
But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Okay? Ephesians chapter 1. Oh, you know where I'm going with this. Ephesians chapter 1. Verses 3 on to verse 14. And let's, let's refresh our memories. Luke chapter 5, verse 38. New wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. Ephesians 1, 3 on to verse 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. I've expounded about what the predestination is in several videos. I'm not going to do it in this video. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath proposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Uh, remember Galatians 3, 27 through 29? Remember that? Yeah? Okay, let's continue. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, in whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. And of course, we uh, go now to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians Chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. Okay? We are sealed. We are preserved. Born again. Okay? New wine must be put into new bottles. Changed life that comes after salvation. When you come to the Lord as a broken, contrite sinner, empty of yourself, broken of yourself. And guess what? Being broken causes sorrow. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, what he did for you, and call on his name. The ultimate shoe of your humility. And I want to tell you something, brethren. Someone who is truly broken, it is very easy to do that. But someone who is full of pride, like every single one of these wicked, easy believism heretics, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his 
brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. Brethren, you know, when you get these twits here on YouTube, outside your door who attack you for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, it's not you that they hate. They hate God. They have no fear of God. Okay. Now, granted, <laughs> there are some people who do legitimately hate you. And uh, make sure that there are no um, uh, car keys or baseball bats or bottles of booze around some of these people, or else they'll kill you with them. <laughs> but uh, there are some out there that genuinely hate you because the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwells within you. And they attack the messenger. They don't go after the message, do they? No, they most certainly do not. Verse 39 in Luke chapter 5. No man also having drunk old wine straightway desireth new. For he saith, the old is better. Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 12. Mark chapter 12, verses 1 on to verse 12. And he began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard, and set an hedge about it, and digged a press, and digged a place for the wine fat, and built a tower, and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And at the season he sent to the husbandman a servant, that he might receive from the husbandman of the fruit of the vineyard. And they caught him and beat him, and sent him away empty. And again he sent unto them another servant, and at him they cast stones, and wounded him in the head, and sent him away shamefully handled. And again he sent another, and him they killed, and many others, beating some and killing some, having yet therefore one son, his well-beloved. He sent him also last unto them, saying, They will reverence my son. But those husbandmen said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. And they took him and killed him, and cast him out of the vineyard. What shall therefore the Lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandmen, and will give the vineyard unto others. And have ye not read this scripture? The stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner? This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And they sought to lay hold on him, but feared the people. For they knew that he had spoken the parable against them. And they left him and went their way. Luke 19. Luke 19. Verses 26 on to verse 27. Luke 19, verses 26 on to verse 27. For I say unto you, that unto every one which hath shall be given. And from him that hath not, even that he hath, shall be taken away from him. Looking at verse 27. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Have you counted the cost? See, this is why easy believism is being pushed so rampantly, so vilely right now. 
but those mine enemies which would not that I should reign over them. Bring them hither and slay them before me. They want a faith without the cross. They want a faith without commandments. They want a faith without standards. They want a faith without conviction of their sin. That's why they jump over scriptural repentance, brokenness and sorrow over your lost condition that you deserve to go to hell. That's why they jump over it. And that's why they protest to change life after salvation. It's why they protest calling upon the name of the Lord because it's humility. These devils have a real problem with humility. They have a real problem with it. Because they will not have the Lord to rule over them. They claim they believe the scriptures. But you look upon these people as conduct of one that's supposed to be of the church of the living God. Huh? But that's when they, they start to make excuses upon excuses upon excuses. And remember, who makes excuses? Lost people! Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verses 1 under verse 17. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the capital S spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Condemned sin in the flesh. Hold your place here. Uh, where is that? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Where Paul says, for I know that in me, ah, uh, ah, uh, one second, got to find this. Sorry, I was looking right at it. Verse 17 in Romans, uh, verse 18 in Romans chapter, verse 18 in Romans chapter 7. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, those are spirit and life. I just paraphrase that. Paraphrase that. For what the law could not do, back in Romans chapter 8, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. As long as you're in this skin suit, you're going to be battling with sin. You're not going to be sinlessly perfect. Okay? Let's continue. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. 
but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. And you can tell these people right away by the level of their attacks, by the language they employ, by the deception that they employ. You can spot these people quite easily. Let's continue. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If See that? Circle if. If so be that if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the capital S, Spirit of Christ, the Lord is that Spirit, he is none of his. And, <laughs> and uh, Beelzebub of, of Blackpool and the Canadian little boy toy to Beelzebub of Blackpool, um, there are those out there of you, enemies of our Lord, think those guys are saved. I don't think so. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Whose righteousness? Christ's righteousness, which is imputed unto us. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit, capital S, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit, capital S, of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit, lowercase us there, that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that when we, that we may also be glorified, oh, excuse me, together. Verse 8, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And these people here on YouTube who attack Brian, Brother Brian, who attack Brother Aaron, attack me, who attack many of the brethren. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter three. First Corinthians chapter three. Verses one on verse seven. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal. Even as unto babes in Christ, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? 
walk as men, just regular men. For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos, but ministers by whom ye believe? Even as the Lord gave to every man, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God giveth the increase. Whoop! Hello! First Corinthians chapter 10, verses 20 on to verse 26. First Corinthians chapter 10, verses 20 on to verse 26. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. <laughs> I was just thinking about some guy in Canada right there. <laughs> Beg your pardon. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful for me. But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things that if I not. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no question for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. You can't have it both ways. You're either on the Lord's side or you're on the devil's side. Solomon kind of tried to play both sides, you know. There is no C option. It's either A or B. There is no C. You're either lost or you're saved of the church of the living God. There is no middle ground. Which one are you? I'm not talking to you, Jesuit coadjutor fakes. No. Which one are you? And of course, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 on to verse 18, of course. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial, or Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate. Sat the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, Sat the Lord Almighty. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Come on, what are you doing, Brett? Galatians chapter 5, verses 14 on to verse 26. Galatians chapter 5, verses 14 on to verse 26. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed 
one of another. This I say, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. Hello, we all know that, those of us at the church of the living God. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. <clears throat> of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, spiritual kingdom. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. In Yiddish, shalom. Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And you Jesuit coadjutors and infiltrators, you can fake those. But not for too long. And they that are and they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, the praises of men, provoking one another. And being one. And finally, Romans chapter 6. Beg your pardon, brethren. Romans chapter 6, verses 15 on to verse 23. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto unrighteousness? But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. But ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. Hold your place there really quick. We're going to read verse 20, but Luke chapter 5, verse 39. No man also having drunk old wine straightway desireth new, for he saith the old is better. Remember Lot's wife? Remember Lot's wife? Who looked back at what she was leaving?
Continuing in Romans chapter 6. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. Oh, I'm ashamed of my lost life. Absolutely. I'm ashamed of the things I've done as a lost man. I'm forgiven of those things. Yes, I am forgiven of them. I don't dwell on them. But yes, the things I did as a lost man, grotesque, despicable, as a lost man. But when I came to the Lord broken, crying, snotting all over myself in the bathroom of my former employment on a cold concrete floor, repenting and having sorrow for what I was and for what I did to my Lord. And I trust on him and I called on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God my Father. about you. But no, you, you skip over repentance as going from unbelief to belief. <clears throat> An exchange life is an option. Your life is either going to change or you're going to be taken out or you ain't saved. But now, being made free from sin, and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Hmm. You know, if you're calling yourself a Christian. Christian. And you think that the way it used to be for you before you label took the label that they put upon us, Christian, was better before. Remember Lot's wife? Well, through this little... Through these little verses here, through um, Luke here, we see many things. Changed life after salvation is inevitable because it comes of the Lord. And those who dispute that are not saved. They, have, they love their sin more than they love the Lord, which they claim to do. They have no fear of God before their eyes. They love their sin. And they're going to get what's coming to them. And you know, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God, I still to this day truly don't want to see these people go to hell. But you know what? The closer we get to the catching away of the church of the living God, you know, the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, the venom, the malice, the depravity of these men just gets worse and worse and worse. So, anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you on to the brother who kind of like, hey, Brad, maybe. Thank you for praying for many of you. We love you, and I love you. And thank you to you, the Church of the Living God, my brothers and sisters, for every single thing you have ever done. Thank you. And that's going to be it. And we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.